Hello, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Pro 17, and we're going to talk about project settings. Specifically, if you hit this gear here, this is project settings. This is what your project settings are. And I want to tell you some secrets. First off, your project settings need to match what you're most commonly working with. So what I most commonly work with is my own camera footage. So I go in here, if you go in here to properties and look at video footage taken with my own camera, you'll see that it's in a XAVC-S format. That's a, that's a type of MP4. It's a, contained in an MP4. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm giving you some broad strokes. Start. It's going to help you start to learn these terms and be more familiar with these terms as you continue to learn video. So if, if you feel like any part of this is over your head, that's that's. don't worry. It's not as over your head as you think just take that nugget with you hold on to it and we'll keep learning so uh, this this tells you a lot about it right it tells you the pixel ratio it tells you that it's progressively scanned what progressive scan means let's talk about a couple things that means that you can see the entire image at once if it says interlaced or upper and lower fields first those are different ways to write the interlacing lines that's an older way of creating video that tends to be disappearing but if you have an older camera if you have to go to if you have to go up here to your uh, capture video and actually capture DV tape to your camera, some of you are like, what is that? If you have to do that, then um, that is there's a very good chance that you will have interlaced footage. Uh, so, and a lot of people, a lot of cameras are still, a lot of good cameras are still in use that use DV tapes. So uh, if you go to properties here, we can look at, all these things. It's, this is the ratio. It's a 4K footage, right? It tells you, it can even tell you how big this footage is and when it's shot. So now that you know how to check your media out and see what you're dealing with, you want your project settings to be what you're primarily dealing with. So you might have different media mixed in. You're going to have photos. You're going to have uh, maybe some other types of video that you're using from different video sources with different codecs and things like that. And that can that's all fine. But you want your project settings to match what you're what you're doing, what you're working with, because then it will have the best playback for it. So what I have here, this is this is simply. Um, a custom setup that I've have where uh, it's it's set up to be 4K and it's and really you can just this would get you kind of the same thing if you drop in adjust your media to better match your project or render settings uh, you can actually click that to get Vegas to kind of automatically select that but there's still some things you might want to change yourself so I have HDR mode off because I do not have a high dynamic range monitor so that's something that you want specifically otherwise you'll just get garbage information so I don't think this will improve anything unless you already have something that's capable of a high dynamic range or HDR this is just the amount of pixels you got uh, so this is that's the 4k um, this is a uh, progressive scan, so we already talked about that. All that matches my stuff, right? One square uh, square pixel ratio, 0% output, frame rate is that NTSC. This is American, right? So PAL is uh, what a lot of other places will be. J uh, America and Japan uh, will be NTSC. So depending on where you are, that's uh, your camera's going to be shooting in something different. So since I bought uh, my camera in America and it's shooting... Uh, an American format, it's going to be NTSC. Uh, that's just a lay, layover from the broadcast days. Um, so that's where that comes from. Uh, things are a little bit more universal now, but still, uh, you want to select where you're from. You want to select uh, the the type of the type of you know you you don't want to select PAL or something if you do not if you're not shooting in PAL. NTSC uh, it, it matches my camera setting, so that's what I'm keeping. So. Uh, Stereoscopic 3D mode, uh, right now just leave that off because you can kind of toggle that on if you need to. So for your pixel format, I a lot of times leave mine on 8-bit to keep it simple. The reality is is 32-bit floating point video levels and 32-bit 32 32-bit floating point full range will give you more color depth. It'll give you more saturation ability. It'll make your color seem a little richer. But the problem with that is it also gives you more color responsibility. Uh, it means when your whites are off, they're really off. When your reds are bright, they're really bright. It means you got to be a little more responsible with how you handle your colors. If you're doing just gameplay footage and you've got a high res, uh, uncompressed, 
rip of a game and you're trying to edit that footage out, you know, maybe going to full uh, 32-bit floating point will just let you render out with more of that saturation uh, there, making your footage look richer. And that might be a good idea. But uh, if you're if you're shooting different types of footage or or doing color corrections or things like that, it actually becomes so, so there might be reasons you want to do this. There might be reasons you do not want to do this. I'm going to leave mine at 8-bit. These are not wrong. I'm just going to let you know that it, you might not have a monitor that can see uh, all of these uh, floating point, uh, all this 32-bit color value and stuff too. And that could be an issue as well because you might not see some of the errors that appear on other monitors. So this is something to be careful with. 8-bit's uh, fine. Uh, obviously, these are could be better. Uh, but that's something you want to experiment with on your own and see if this works better for you. Then um, here, with uh, motion blur type, uh, Gaussian or Pyramid, I think, are the two best to choose from. Either would be fine. Uh, I skipped over this because this, this has to do with your final render. Uh, your final render, unless you specif specify something different in your render settings. So let's go there and show you. So if we go to Project, we go to Render As, kind of pull up some render settings here. And uh, here on this, this is a generic one uh, created. If I go to customize template, I could name this something else. But this is, uh, we're not going into how to create uh, customized render settings right now. Uh, but something to keep in mind is it will render it out and it will either maintain as much quality as possible or lose some quality. So if you go to project, it'll actually go video render quality, use project settings, or you can manually set it. If you manually set, set it, you need to name it something that you can find later. Uh, but otherwise, use project settings. What that means is it'll use this setting right here. So this is good by default, which will give you some good quality video. But if you want it to be the best render quality, you need this to set as best. You can actually make this uh, all new projects that can start that way or not. That's up to you. Um, Resample is something very important, and deinterlace method. If you have progressive footage, make sure that you have none selected. And if you're running with interlace footage, you may not need to deinterlace. However, you might need to play around with these and find out what works best if you're trying to create inter move interlace footage to progressive footage. That's a topic for another video, something I do not want to do, uh, but we'll do it if we need to. So if somebody needs that topic, let me know and we'll see. Uh, that is uh, some of the bane of my video school right there. So uh, resample method. Right now, uh, I would suggest disable resample unless you have a ton of different project types. If you're having different frame rates and different project types, resampling will actually help it uh, create something that, that has less stuttering and things like that. It'll help help make the video more cohesively together because it'll essentially kind of resample the video into the video that you're expecting it to be. Uh, since I'm doing a lot of similar medias, they're all MP4s of 1080p and 4K, and they're all 29 to 25 frames per second, I can get away without resample on, and this is the best method. If you can go without resample, do it. If you can't, then you can do a couple of different types of resample. Forest resample will do it no matter what. Smart resample will do it if it needs to do it. Uh, there's probably some more um, fancy explanations behind that, but that's good enough for this video. Um, like I said, this little checkbox right here will uh, uh, let the media change. It'll, it'll change what to what it, Vegas thinks is best, which could be better than what you chose or could not be, but really it'll just adjust it to the first thing you drop in there. And uh, that may not be the best thing to use. Now, this is your uh, where your pre-render files will go. And what a pre-render is, we'll talk about that right now. What a pre-render is, is you can grab some footage or something. So, for example, you can see this Korok right here. Is This is 1080p footage that I have squeezed down here over top of this 4K footage. Uh, and I might want to see exactly how this looks. So I can right click and hit uh, selectively pre-render and it'll pre-render a track that it'll play until I make changes and then that way it'll give me the most smooth, most accurate version of what this is going to look like in the final render. So that those files are kept here. This matters only if you're having space issues on your C drive or you have a special scratch drive that you want everything, all your video footage to go to. If that's the case, you can actually change where that location is. 
Uh, so for audio, what I'm going to suggest is keep your sample rate at 4,800. That's a good. That's a good sample rate. Higher, uh, you're talking about like you're recording bands and things like that. Uh, lower, and you're actually going to start noticing a diminished quality. 44 and 48 are the sweet spot. 44 is what's called CD quality, and 48 is broadcast quality. This is this is 48. Uh, thousand kilobits per second or her, uh, her sample rate hertz uh, this is, I've heard that expressed different ways but 48,000 is definitely where you want to be 16-bit uh, is a fine depth however you can go deeper it'll make your file sizes bigger but that's up to you resample stretch quality you can put this on best you can also do your Dolby surround sound if you if you're dealing with surround sound uh, so that that's where you can select that there if you do not have surround sound do not worry about it if you turn on surround sound when you don't have it you're just gonna give yourself problems this is where you can put in some project settings info so when you render it out it'll actually carry these uh, carry these comments with it and the metadata this right here is where uh, I usually leave that empty because I rarely am handing off something that's going to be distributed further than uh, my YouTube account uh, or to the one client that I'm working with that needs the one file for the one thing so uh, it, it's you would only fill this out if you have a mass amount of people you need to communicate this this tiny bit of information to um, and this is where you can do it if you're actually rendering out CDs and stuff like that this is where you can leave some uh, track numbers and things like that on the CD metadata as well. I haven't honestly dealt with this stuff ever, so if you know more about these information, this these tabs, let me know. I would love to know more. Uh, ruler, so this is the kind of ruler you're gonna have. It's not necessarily how your video, how your project video is, but when it says ruler, we're talking about time and frame. This right here is your ruler your timeline and it goes hours minutes seconds frames per second you can see it goes 29 zero right this is the 29th frame this is the zeroth frame that's the 29.970 frames uh the ruler kind of cheats that for you to make it more even and this is where you can really see exactly what you're doing with the timeline you can change how that works here in the project settings so you can actually do absolute frames and hit apply and then now you can see uh, now you can see the actual frame distance right you can see you can see the 29.9 thousand it, it actually will count out the frames perfectly here if you go to there's all sorts of different things you can do now remember it's best to just time and frames is what you're mostly going to have. A seconds is good if you're doing maybe just music. Uh, so if you're doing some kind of music stuff and it's only audio, you could definitely try out just time or just seconds um, or maybe even samples. But uh, these are really what you're going to be dealing with. You can select something that's more specific to what you're doing. So this empty drop frame audio, I want to show you that look. So if we go apply here, and then we look at the the drop frame that has a semicolon if you see a semicolon that means it's in drop frame that doesn't mean it's forcing your project to be in drop frame that means you're actually looking at the drop frame timeline here so now you can see 11 12 14 let's let's 17 19 21 23 27 29 see 29 40 this this keeps in mind that there is that little fraction of a frame there that has been dropped out. So uh, that's just what that that's just what that ruler means when you see that on a timeline. Uh, and if you do non-drop, it'll be a colon instead of a semicolon. If you apply that there, now it's a colon. Again, that's, we're just changing the meter which we're measuring by. Um, but that's important if you're trying to do some some nitty gritty stuff there. So really, times and frames is all I ever need to use. Uh, you can actually do. Um, some music metronome stuff too. Now I haven't messed with this enough to be the definitive guide on this so this sounds like a great topic for another video. If you do have more information about this option I would love to know in the comments below. But that is your guide to project settings in Vegas Pro 17. 
I meant to be in depth. If some of it, if it went over your head, let me know. If there's specific questions, because we did talk about some nitty gritty. If you want to know more about any of these issues or any of these uh, boxes or anything that I talked about, let me know in that as well. I would love to address it. Right now, we're ignoring these. These should be locked to kind of what your uh, standard settings are. So uh, I'm going to apply those and hit OK. And now. We've got project settings we can work with. So thank you so much for watching. We hit a thousand subscribers, and that's because you guys. I super appreciate it. And we're coming out with more videos all the time. Steven may be releasing some more videos soon. Uh, so if you see his face, say hi, Steven, uh, in the comments. Um, like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. This one was a bit more in-depth and nitty-gritty and probably more boring. But uh, some people really need to know these things. And if that wasn't the video for you, that's okay. We got more introduction videos and things like that coming out as well too. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.